Hey guys, welcome to the last video in this beginner yoga series and we are going over the lovely yummy stretches that we do at the beginning and after class. So the props you are going to need, potentially, um, are a strap, grab some blocks if you have them, and a bolster and you're going to want to keep them fairly close. So most of the stretches that you are going to see in class are going to be seated or laying down. And so for this video we're going to start with our seated stretches and then we'll make our way laying down. Our first seated stretch and one of my absolute favorites is a seated cat cow. So we're going to bring our hands onto the knees we're going to lift the chest and gaze up towards the ceiling on that inhale and then exhale. Inhale lifts and exhale lowers. We're going to take two more inhale and exhale. It's the same movement from tabletop. Inhale, but just from a nice easy seat and exhale. Come back to center, bring the bottoms of the feet together, finding a butterfly. So we want the knees out. From here, you can move the feet at however is comfortable. If you want them closer to the body, if you want them farther away. And then we're just going to hinge from the hips and fold forward. So here it might be nice just to have a block to rest the head on. Kind of whatever you're feeling. In a yin class where you would hold this pose a little bit longer, props are going to be your friend. If it's just kind of a warm up for vinyasa or slow flow, um, you probably won't have time to really set yourself up with props, but always know that they're there if you need them. We're going to come all the way up, moving into head to knee. Left leg's going to go nice and long. The right foot comes into the inside of the thigh if that's comfortable. If you need to move it up farther by the knee, that's fine. If this is super uncomfortable, you can put um, a blanket underneath. If you have issues with your knees, just come into a wide-legged fold and just bend over one leg at a time. Uh, my favorite thing about yoga that I just can't get enough of is that it is so adaptable and it is so easily accessible to everybody. There's always a modification. There's always a way to adapt a pose to fit you, to fit your need, to fit a certain day. Um, it's really one of the reasons that I started falling in love with the practice just because no matter what you were doing or where you are, you could always do this. Always do the poses, always do the practice and I think that's something that's absolutely fantastic. So we're going to come back to that head to knee. And here your hamstrings are going to be your guide. So as you start to fold, when you get that little hamstring tug, that behind the knee, that's where you're going to pause. Again, if you're in a yin class, you'll have a little bit more time to work into that hamstring. But usually this will probably be held anywhere from 30 seconds to maybe a minute. Um, just as a nice little warm up or cool down. We'll come back to center. Bring both feet out. And we're going to take a seated forward fold. So again here, a lot of people like to hinge from the chest, but I want you to kind of put your hands on your hip bones. And then I want you to hinge from the hip and notice how you get a different length and you get a deeper fold. Again, your hamstrings are going to be your friends here. They're going to kind of guide you on when to stop. If your hamstrings are super tight and this gets to be really difficult, you can loop your strap around your feet and use the strap to help you fold forward. If you are extremely flexible and would like to add to this, putting a block behind your feet, and I'm not that flexible, <laughs> but I know people who are, so this one's for you. Um, you put the block behind your feet and grab, and then you can add another block, um, so there is a way to build on this because I just know some people are super, super flexible. Back to that wide-legged fold, same concept, coming onto the elbows. Um, you can use 
I'll move my assistant here. I can use a block to rest. Um, again, your hamstrings are, will guide you on this one. We're going to come back to that head to knee, bringing that left foot in this time or staying in that straddle fold. And we'll just bend over that right leg. Um, with the head to knee, you can also use the strap to hook around your foot. It's a great cat toy, keeps them distracted. <laughs> and we'll come back to center. A couple more seated poses, bringing that left arm down, right arm up and over. What's nice about this one is that it's a really good side body stretch, but you want to make sure you keep both sit bones down. If you notice you're tilting, pull back a little bit. We'll bring the right arm down, left arm up and over. Come back to center, and we'll take it just a little twist. So the left hand's going to come to the right knee, right hand behind, sit up nice and tall, and gently start to twist. Back to center, we'll twist to the other side. And back to center. We have a few kneeling, stretching poses as well. We'll start with cat-cow. So coming into tabletop, same concept as we did with the seated earlier, but this time you're on your hands and knees. So the important part here is not to shift forward, backwards, or side to side. So we're going to inhale, drop the belly, lift the gaze, lift the tailbone. Exhale, curl, push through the hands, gaze to the navel. Inhale. And exhale. One more inhale. And exhale. Come back to center. We're going to move right into puppy pose. So this one can be very challenging, similar to fish pose in the back bend, because it's all about that upper chest, that upper back between the shoulder blades, which we don't really get to as much as we should. So staying in your hands and knees, walk your hands forward. From here, lower the chest down. If this is too much, you can't get the forehead all the way down. You can put a block underneath the forehead. You can stack the arms and rest. But just make sure you have enough room that that chest can really sink down. Come back all the way up to tabletop. Moving into thread the needle. Right arm goes nice and high. Exhale, the arm comes underneath the armpit, all the way down, rest the shoulder. Again, here, make sure you're not leaning too far onto um, the side that the arm is threading. We want to keep the knees above the hips. Arm can stay right underneath the shoulder. You can extend it out. You can wrap it around. We'll come back. Left arm nice and high. Exhale, thread the needle. Exact same options as before. Back to center. Moving into a couple of more hamstring stretches. Bring that right foot forward. Both hands are going to come inside the foot. This is our lizard pose. Our left leg is going to be super nice and long. You should feel a pull in that hip bone here. Options to stay up on the hands. Take a twist. Come down to the forearms. We have lots of options here. From here, we'll move right into a half split, so wiggle that foot in between the hands. Staying up on the knee to start, we're going to flex that front foot and walk our hands back. So for a deeper stretch, walk the hands out towards the foot, 
for a lesser stretch, we're going to keep the hands close. Again, let your hamstring really guide you here, and let it will let you know when enough is enough, or at least mine does. If staying up on the knee hurts, you can gently bring it down. From here, we'll make our way all the way back. Uh, we're going to fly right into Pigeon. So I'm going to turn to face you. We'll go over the supine version um, when we take more of the, those supine stretches. But for now, we're going to take traditional Pigeon, and we're going to wiggle that foot all the way over towards the left hand. And if you can see, my right knee peeks out a little bit outside of my right hand. Your back leg is going to be nice and long. Joints are all in place. And you should really be settling in into that hip. So you should feel it here, maybe a little bit in the glute on that right side. If you notice you're tilting over to the right, you can grab a block and put it under, um, underneath your bottom. That will help keep the hips nice and straight. Option to stay up on the hands or come down. Uh, this is a very challenging pose because of the hip flexibility. Um, again, we'll go over the supine version when we roll through those in just a moment. But for now, we're going to tuck that back toe. We're going to make our way into tabletop. And we're going to use that sequence on the other side. So our left foot's going to come forward right into lizard. Both hands inside, right leg is nice and stretched long. Again, option to stay up on the hands, take that twist or forearms, just like the other side. You can also put the blocks underneath the hands if you need to. Bring that foot in between, stay up on the knee for now, reach back, flex the foot, half split. Again, let your hamstring guide you here. Deeper stretch, closer to the foot. Lesser stretch, brings it back to the body. Too much, sit it on back. Coming all the way up. Right into that pigeon, wiggle that foot all the way. Left knee comes slightly outside of the left hand. Back leg is really nice and long. Option step on the hands. Come down to the forearms. Some people like to rest their forehead on the mats. I like to rest mine on a block sometimes. Again, if you feel yourself tilting, just from a different um, angle than we had last time, put that block underneath your glute. This is a pose I could really spend up to five minutes on each side just because my hips and my hamstrings get so tight. Um, if you have a desk job or drive a lot, you're really going to feel this pose. We'll come up to the hands and make our way back to that tabletop. So we move through some seated stretches, a couple of kneeling stretches, and now we're going to move on to these supine stretches, our lying down ones. Um, these ones you'll see, you know, more at the end of class or maybe right at the beginning. So I'm going to move into child's pose really quickly here. You have some options for child's pose. You can have the knees together, head down, bring the hands behind. One last little kneeling pose. Or you can take a wide-legged extended child's pose. Knees go to the edge. Bring the arms out, forehead down. If you are in a class and you're starting to feel tired, this is the pose you want to go to. This is your home base. This is your friend. And we'll come back up and make our way on to our backs. And the first thing we'll do is a supine pigeon. So this is the version you take if the one 
that we did earlier is just too much or if you have you know bad knees or an injury and you're going to want to strap so coming on down to your back we're going to cross the right ankle over the left thigh so now you can stay here or bring that hand in between the hole that you made by crossing your ankle reach that other arm behind and pull that leg in nice and close if it's too difficult to reach behind that leg, use the strap, pull that bad boy in. Um, this version doesn't always get cued in class, so if you know this is where you need to go, just head there. Um, I always personally like it when students know where to go and know what they need because they can't cue for everybody. So if you know supine is where you need to be, I would head there. That's awesome. I love it. So we'll bring both knees in and take it to the other side, cross that left leg using the strap, staying here. We'll interlace the hands and bring it behind. And then we'll bring the legs in and find a supine twist so we're going to bring both knees stacked over to the right now the fun thing about the supine twist is there are so many options oh my gosh it's so great so we'll start with the knees together if your knees can't stack you can put a block if you're unable to go all the way down you can put a block if the knees together just isn't a big enough stretch for you Extend that bottom leg and just use your right hand to bring that left leg over. There's also the option, let me move all my stuff here, to put the bolster also underneath the knee. And again, all these options, especially the props, typically aren't cued in a class. But again, if you know what you need and you are able to ha grab the props before class, or even ask for them during class, head there. That's absolutely perfect. The whole point about this is being good to your body and moving and listening. And with these tools, it'll just make your class that much better for you. And we'll come back to center. We'll take it over to the other side. Both knees in. And tip them. We'll start with the knees together over to the left. Again, if that's not enough, extend that bottom leg. The key to the supine twist is we really want all of that twist in the back and in the core. So if you aren't able to keep both shoulder blades down onto the mat, you're gonna need to pull back a little bit. And this again is good to have the props because it can help you keep the twist, but you won't need to work as hard to keep the shoulder down if you're able to prop up um, at a certain point. And come back to center. <clears throat> we'll take a happy baby. So we'll grab the pinky edges of the feet. Pull the knees into the armpits. And from here, we want to make sure that the legs are at 90 degree if possible. And we want to push that tailbone down. A lot of time people like to curve in, but that's not really going to help your low back at all in this. So we want to make sure your tailbone is pressed to the mat. So you might need to grab onto the ankles, behind the knee, or take a supine child's pose. So that's where you're going to grab onto the shins and pull the knees towards the armpits this way. You're going to get the same benefits, but it's just going to look a little different. And then from here, legs go up nice and long, arms up overhead, one last big stretch, banana asana, my favorites. And we're going to bring the feet over to the lower right corner. And then the hands are going to go to the upper right corner. So you're going to make like a banana shape on your mat. So your back and your shoulder blades and your bottom should all be on the mat. If you notice you're starting to lift and turn, again, back off just a little bit until you're able to flatten out. 
over time, when it comes with these stretching poses, the more you do them, the easier they'll get. I know, that sounds super cliche, but it's true. The more you do them, the easier they're going to get, I promise. So from here, if you want more, cross that left ankle over, grab below the wrist on the left hand, and pull slightly if you want a deeper stretch. If not, just stay where you are. This is usually a good enough stretch for me, to be honest. I just really want to open up that rib cage and that side body. I'll come back to center and take it over to the other side because I can't leave you lopsided. And then same thing, crossing that right ankle or grabbing below the right wrist. Um, you never want to grab at the joint. You always want to go below or above. And for banana asana, I would strongly recommend grabbing just below. coming back to center and this is usually where you would end up right into savasana that beautiful end of class nap time where you just get to relax or you rock and roll up to a tabletop and get ready to power through your class <laughs> I hope this was able to answer some of your questions. You learned a little bit more about stretching. Um, I know I talked about yin, so I'll kind of glaze over that. Um, in a yin class, you hold poses anywhere for three to five minutes. Yin really focuses on range of motion and flexibility. So when we were in head to knee or forward fold and I mentioned yin, that's kind of what I meant. Um, there's so much time that you're really able to gently deepen your fold and really stretch out that hamstring versus a vinyasa flow or a slow flow class where you're really only going to be holding these poses for 30 seconds to a minute. Um, an interesting fun fact that I learned is you really need to hold stretches for 90 seconds minimum because that's the only way we're really going to get into that fascia, that netting around the muscles and loosen it up. Um, because overnight when you sleep, everything kind of hardens because you're not moving. And when you wake up in the morning, we typically don't stretch. So everything kind of stays as is and gradually loosens a little bit as we walk or move about our day. But nothing ever really gets completely loosened up and relaxed. 